let's practice some of this dimensional analysis. So in example number one, we know that our density is 4.46 grams per centimeters cubed. And we're asked, what would the density of this material be in grams per liter? So we always start by writing down what we know. And when we're doing dimensional analysis, I know we usually write it with a slash like this, but it will make your life easier if you write it like a fraction. And we want to know grams per liter. Well, hopefully you know that one centimeter cubed is equal to one milliliter. So we can actually just change the units a little bit. and make it grams per milliliter. And you should also know that 1,000 milliliters equals one liter. So we're going to use this conversion factor here to do our dimensional analysis. We're going to multiply by the conversion factor. If milliliters are on the bottom, then they have to go on the top over here. So we've not ever done any dimensional analysis in previous classes here that required you to convert units on the bottom so be careful about how you set them up and you get 4460 grams per liter Let's practice another one. So we have water leaking from a container at a rate of 1.2 milliliters every hour. And if the rate's constant, how many liters do we lose in one week? So we want to get into units of liters per week. So we know our relationship between milliliters and liters is right up here. So we can do that step first. But in this case, milliliters is on the top. So in our conversion factor, it's going to go on the bottom. So our milliliters cancel out. And I like to do all of my conversions at once. So I'm not going to do the math here. I know it would be 1.2 divided by 1,000 and that would get me liters per hour. But I like to round just one time, so I'm going to wait and do all my math at once. Now I've got to convert hours, and I want to get hours into weeks. I don't know how many hours are in a week, but I know how many hours are in a day, and how many days are in a week, so I can use those conversion factors to change. I, I know that there are 24 hours in one day, and seven days in one week. So we can use these two conversion factors to convert. And we're going to multiply by our number. If we have hours on the bottom, then 24 hours has to go on top. And one day on the bottom. So we see that hours cancel out. And if we did 1.2 divided by 1,000 times 24, we would have liters per day. So we're going to do one more step. And we know since days are down here, they have to be up here, seven days in one week. And now days cancel out. And the only units left are liters per week, which is what we were asked to find. So you just multiply by everything on the top and divide by everything on the bottom. You can do it in any order because multiplication and division isn't order sensitive. And we get that it leaks at 0 0.2016 liters per week. And if we think about significant figures, we can't have a more significant number. In our conversion factors, all of these are counting numbers. They're infinitely significant. But here, our original measurement only had two significant figures, so our converted measurement can't be more significant. So we're going to say 0 0.20 liters per week. 
Let's try one more example. So in this one, we're asked to convert 35 miles per hour into meters per second. And this is a conversion we're actually going to do in this class several times. So we have miles per hour. And this is where those conversion factors listed in your notes come into play. Please put them on an equation card. I don't care if it's physically a card or not. It could be a file saved on your computer. It could be anything you want, but you need to have those conversion factors and the equations we're going to start learning in one place so you can easily reference it. It will help make your life a lot easier. So we have miles per hour and we want to go into meters per second. So we need to know a relationship between miles and meters. In your list of conversion factors you have that one mile equals 1.61 kilometers. And we know that one kilometer equals 1,000 meters. And we're going hours to seconds. We know that one hour is 60 minutes and one minute is 60 seconds. But we're going to do this hours to seconds conversions enough times in this class that we need to know that one hour is 3,600 seconds. That's 60 times 60. It will make your life easier to have that in one step instead of two. And if you need to add that conversion factor to your card, please do. So let's set our work up. We want to cancel out miles. So they have to go on the bottom. One mile is 1.61 kilometers. So our miles cancel out. We, have, we could get kilometers per hour. And then one kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters. So we could get meters per hour now. And finally, remember hours is down here, so we have to put it on top. One hour is 3,600 seconds. And if we look at what's not marked out, we have meters per second. And we get 15.652778. I'm going to stop there. That's more than enough significant figures. If we look, our original number has two. In this case, this is counting numbers because one hour is exactly 3,600 seconds with no partial bits anywhere. And we know that one kilometer is exactly 1,000 meters. This conversion factor is actually a measurement. It's rounded, so we could have this be much longer. So we count this one for significant figures. It's three. So two or three, we're going to have two. So our answer is 16 meters per second. If you're not sure about whether a conversion factor is a counting number or not, you can always ask. But I will say metric conversions are always counting numbers. Converting between metric and, and English are always measurements. So they would count for significant figures. Please practice some of these problems and let me know if you have any questions.